<laughs> it's been fun. I've been uh, resisting, bargaining, um, suffering, <laughs> you name it, not wanting to give in to throwing my back out because obviously I've done it before, so I know what it is and <laughs> I've been through it before. And I hate giving in to pain or suffering for any reason. So, of course, today I'm laying back in bed, you know, and, and taking care of myself and, you know, putting hot packs and cold packs and stretching the muscles and putting them back into place and the vertebrae and all that. Doing all that, you know, I'm supposed to do. Not. <laughs> I'm no different than you are. I'm not doing it. Neither would you. <laughs> Unless they gag me and hogtie me, you know, and slap me down in a bed and hold me down restraints, you know, I'm not going to lay around suffering, you know, just, oh, woe is me. I feel so bad. <laughs> no, I'm going to fight it every way I know how. I'm going to eat things and stretch things and, you know, do other things and keep myself distracted, you know, because... Even if God wants me to be still, you know, I'm just like you, you know, I'm going to run off and do something else. <laughs> so praise the Lord. We uh, read the song and having gone out this last weekend and uh, gone dancing, I was having so much fun that, you know, I just figured that, you know, break dancer like me, you know. <laughs> Okay, there was a break dancer there. I didn't try his moves. I was thinking about it. It was close, but no, I didn't. I didn't do any of those moves. But did seem to have a lot of fun and uh, paying the consequences of my actions now, as I seem to be getting just a little bit older than what I think I am. You know, the body seems to be a little bit more worn than I think it is, but the mind, ah, it keeps going, takes a licking and keeps on ticking. In Streams in the Desert, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument from Isaiah 41.15. A bar of steel with $5 when wrought into horseshoes is worth $10. If made into needles, it is worth $350. Into penknife blades, it is worth $32,000. If, if into springs for watches, it is worth $250,000. What a drilling the poor bar must undergo to be worth this. But the more it is manipulated, the more it is hammered and passed through the fire and beaten and pounded and polished, the greater the value. Maybe this parable will help us to be silent, still, and long-suffering. Those who suffer most are capable of yielding most. And it is through pain that God is getting the most out of us for his glory and the blessing of others. Life is very mysterious. Indeed, it must be inexplicable unless we believe that God was preparing us for scenes and ministries that lie beyond the veil of sense in the eternal world, where highly tempered spirits will be required for special service. The churning lathe that has the sharpest knives produces the finest work. Often God is at work in your life, and since he can't get you to cooperate with him, he will... <laughs> coerce you in ways that you hadn't thought of before in order to accomplish his purposes. You may give in when you're wrestling like Jacob and have your hip thrown out of socket. <laughs> or in the circumstances of life, your job taken away. Or your wife. Or your children. Or whatever it is that's hindering you in some way. Or that is needful for you to grow in some personality quirk and trait that you need to change that maybe maybe God had already spoken to you about it maybe there was something that just haven't quite got the message yet and bingo I think you're going to get the idea because one thing that you know we used to sing from Benny Hester was he's going to squeeze you just because he loves you because he knows what's best for you he's going to use the Holy Spirit in your life not to give you all these wonderful gifts you know and just let you go off on your own but he's also going to convict you, convince you, persuade you, and coerce you into a place where you're going to start doing his will his way. Or you ain't going to make it, and he doesn't give up on you that easy. 
he works pretty hard and he's willing to pound pretty tough, you know, in order to get you into a place that he can use effectively for his purposes. So, praise the Lord, you know, you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way. You know what? If you're like me, man, that hard way it seems to be pretty, pretty regular. <laughs> But if you do the easy way, you skip kind of some of these sufferings, you know. Now, you don't have to, every time you're suffering, go looking for, what did I do, God? Or, you know, try to figure out, oh, Lord, you know, I guess you're trying to teach me, you know, how to be, you know, something so that this is all for that reason or that reason. No, I mean, you use common sense. You might be suffering because you did something stupid, you know, and you're suffering the consequences of your actions. Like me. <laughs> I went out and danced him. I do moves that, you know, throw my back out or weaken it. And uh, because I'm not in shape necessarily by working on the internet 12 hours a day, that I wasn't prepared for having a lot of physical exertion. So in those ways, it's not just suffering that comes to you that's God's purpose, but sometimes it's a consequence of your own action, but then God will use that. See how it works? God will use that also, now that he's got your attention, to talk to you. Wow, he can take something crooked and make it straight? Or take something straight and make it crooked? Yep. That's the way our God is. He's good. He's great. And he can do all kinds of things that he can not even imagine that he can do. Because a lot of times people say, well, God can't do except for what he says he's going to do. First revealed to his prophets and then written in his word and then spoken by this and done by that. And Somehow he's going to operate according to A, B, C, and D, and he can't create anything bigger than he can't move, and yada, yada. And the stupidity of it all is that, why did you call him God in the first place if you thought he was limited? <laughs> if that's your kind of God, I think you're making up your God rather than acknowledging God as being himself. Because you see, God created the universe. That means nothing is limited to himself. Sorry, even if he limits himself, he won't limit himself. Because how can you limit yourself when you're yourself? He can do whatever he wants to. Now, we do have assurances that he's promised us, which is kind of nice. Jesus has told us, well, this is who he is, so we kind of know that he won't do some things. But we still find ourselves underneath God's sovereignty by acknowledging in holiness that he can do whatever he wants to do. And frankly, when you know God is holy, that's what it means. He can do anything he wants to, anytime he wants to, either with you or without you. And he doesn't need your permission to do it. <laughs> I'm sorry. You just like to think of it that way while you're here on Earth. It's kind of like the ant running around. Thinks he's got free will and predestination all down. And he's running around just like, you know, doing his plans and all his things. And a flood comes by and the ant survives it, you know. And, and somebody digs up his ant hole and he survives it and he's get puts in an ant farm and he survives that. You know, he still thinks he's in charge. <laughs> well, I don't mean to be, you know, like bursting your bubble, but sometimes people act that way with God. They're really just an ant in creation. And they really think that they know all about God. And they're just an ant in an ant farm, just digging their little hole and doing their little thing, you know, and going on about their way. The reality is, is that if you really want to know what God's doing, ask him. <laughs> it's about that simple. It really is. Even when you're suffering, ask him. That's what he said to do. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, you know, leave it there if you want to. But Jesus also said that you could ask him. And I think if you're hurting like I am, you just might want to do that. Ask him. <laughs>